what it is my friends i'm getting ready to go fishing and i had a couple people reach out to me on the channel about my boat how it's set up and stuff and it's getting that time of year you know we're in the middle of summer but some people are thinking about doing some fall slash winter projects to their boat or maybe they're thinking about getting in a new new aluminum boat and they want to pimp it out so i just kind of wanted to do a little walk through and first of all everything that i've done on this boat has been documented on youtube in a playlist it's a boat mods playlist on my channel which is obviously the 10 horse money youtube channel so you can go back and check it check all that out i try to do like a step-by-step -step on a, a lot of the projects that i did but let's start up here on the front first thing i'll show you is something that i kind of did because i was a little bit nervous about only having a single winch strap here to hold my boat i mean what if that strap breaks when you're going down the highway so what i've done is walk on this side i kind of created a little safety strap i just took an old seat belt that i had tied a hook to it got another hook here and then on my winch strap here i took a big metal ring slid it in there and so when i put the boat back on the trailer i, I clip that right here and i can take this and attach it to that metal ring it's kind of tricky to do one-handed let me just slide that in there like that. So now we've got a safety strap. If this main winch strap would break, I've got a secondary strap. It, at least it's gonna hold the, no, hold the nose of the boat down. It's not gonna fly off the trailer until I can get off the road and figure out something else. So that's the setup on that. It's just a little safety thing. It was always making me nervous. I, mean, I don't like to be, only have one point of safety when I'm running down the road. We've got an LED nav front light that is ran to a switch panel right here. I got a switch panel right here. So this front light and my rear light are ran to the front switch panel and the back switch panel. That way, if you're out there night fishing, you hear a boat coming, you don't have to walk to that rear switch panel. You just got the little switch there right by the trolling motor. You can flip it. Lights are on when the boat goes by, you can flip it again, it's over. I've got another nav port right here. This is hot wired straight to the battery. It's not on a switch. This is for the Yellow Tech power stick. So if I want to do some video from the front, kind of Fluke Master style, I can just bring an extra camera up here and I've got direct power supply. I don't have to worry about that. Let's go over here to the trolling motor. I've got an 80 pound, 24 volt Ultrex trolling motor. Min code, it's been a great trolling motor for me. Love the thing. Spot lock is phenomenal. If you're still running a non spot lock trolling motor, I've really recommend getting one that has uh, an anchor mode whether it be Lowrance Garmin or Minn Kota. It's just super handy to be out there in the wind. You just hit spot lock and you can focus on fishing anytime you need to retie. Take a lunch break, you just hit spot lock. It's super, super handy. On the head, this is a Lowrance HDI transducer. This has 2D and down scan. And this is my Garmin LiveScope LVS or LV32 transducer which runs to my graphs over here on the front i've got the garmin this is the 1022 gps map it's been a great unit if you're looking to get into the forward facing sonar forward looking sonar game and you're going with garmin get a 10 inch graph i mean i recommend a 10 inch graph i wouldn't go any smaller than nine but 10 or above. I mean, I honestly wish I would've got 12, but 10 is perfect. I don't, I'm don't. i glad I don't have a nine. I think it would be just a little bit too small. So get the biggest graph that you can get for the money. I've also got a Lowrance HDS nine. This is a gen three right here and I've got them stacked right here. This is a little project that was recommended by my buddy, Jonathan Blattle. This is called the poor man's, poor man's Mount. I did a video on that. You can go back and check it out, but it's a great inexpensive way to stack two graphs on the front. You just got a three inch piece of aluminum bracket, the gimbal mount here, gimbal mount here, and they just stack like that. So if you're interested in, in doing that, um, I did kind of do a breakdown on that. I'll try to leave a link to it right here, right here, wherever. If it's not there, just go look it up. It's easy to find. Just got a gimbal mount right here. This is all mounted to the deck underneath with bolts. It's pretty snug, you know, I can, pivot this however I want. It's adjustable with that ball, but this thing has been really good. So far, I haven't had any problems with it slamming over. I know some guys that are running bigger water, maybe on a glass boat, it might not be the best option, but for smaller lakes and stuff where you're not getting into real heavy traffic, you won't have any problem with this mount. Right here, we have the auto tree. This right here, I don't feel like enough people have this thing. 
This is the auto retrieve made by luresaver.net. You can go check them out, www.luresaver.net. But it's a retractable lure saving device. I did a video on that, you can check it out too. But this is on a retractable trout line. Um, you got this plug knocker right here. Anytime I get hung up, it's right there. This thing is key. Rod strap right here, obviously, for rods. Um, I can put like five or six rods in here. They run down here, it works great. I don't have one on the other side, I need to do that. Seat pedestal, I got a seat pedestal. I don't usually fish with a butt seat. I never do actually, but as I get older, there may be a day where I want to uh, use that and I need to use that. So I went ahead and put that in there. I've got carpet padding. You can see the outline of this. This is all padded deck. I put padded deck all the way up to here in the front deck. And man, it's a little bit expensive. It probably costs you about a hundred bucks to do, but it is so nice at the end of the day to not have your knees and your hips barking at you. And just having some kind of deck padding, it's really key. It's worth the investment. Underneath the deck mounted right here is a fuse block. Got several things run up to this fuse block. I've got six gauge wire up to the fuse block for my live scope. And then here is the live scope black box mounted underneath the deck there. It's real important to have proper gauge wire running up to your live scope so you get all that juice and you don't have to worry about your screen not getting enough power to do what it's doing because this thing does a lot. It needs a lot of juice to do what it's doing. So don't skip on the power. I also did another video on that. I got videos on everything, like I said. But that is key so let's kind of walk down the boat a little bit to the mid section this is a hatch so we got this aluminum deck everything in this boat is aluminum i put this hatch in i did a video on that too this hatch has been okay it's sturdy the handles um they only lasted about six months i mean i've taken these little keychains just so i can grab a hold the handles kind of popped out i don't know not the greatest design system but i do like the hatch it's been pretty good for me it does leak a little bit of water around here it doesn't have the greatest you know waterproofing system but overall it's okay it's not a lot of water i mean it has to really rain to get any kind of water you get a little water through these latch system right here but it's not it's really not that bad it's not like to where i want to take it out and redo it so i'm content with it but underneath here i've got an open deck this is just all storage i got my life jackets i got throw cushion you know i put my cooler there i got my nav light tennis shoes i've got some tools and stuff spare trolling motor prop just you know just the things that you need in case something goes crazy duct tape black tape screwdriver socket set that kind of stuff so that's what the under deck this deck runs all the way up to about right here so we got lots of room in here if i was going to do something a little bit different i probably would have put another access panel like right in this area so i can get to stuff right here maybe just a little bit more storage you always want to have more storage in your boat it seems like it's there's never enough storage so that is that this was originally a full live well so this was like a 50 inch live well. By the way, this is an Express 1650 commercial boat. This was a full live well, which, you know, it was a commercial boat. It was for putting big flathead and carp and drum, whatever you needed in there. And I went to Farrar Welding. Farrar Welding is in Jackson. They do great work on aluminum boats. They do all kinds of metal work, but the guys over there have done a lot of work on small John boat projects and stuff. So they know what they're doing with aluminum. I had him cut this down and put a divider wall in there. I've got, this is my in pump, pump in. This is actually, you know, I've got a drain plug right here, but I keep that sealed. But I installed this pump. This is a pump in, it comes from right here. So I can pump water in, I've got a recirc pump. This is just basically a bilge. It's all, everything's ran to a switch and I just got this tubing that runs up. I've got holes drilled in it. So when I've got this thing filled up, it recirculates that water up through here and it has a little shower spray and it just kind of got it plugged in the back here and just kind of puts oxygen in the water. Here's my coal clips right here. This is, uh, these are TH Marine coal clips. So far they've been pretty good. I'm happy with them. Haven't had them that long, but I've, you know, had several tournaments using them and they seem to be fine. I put a vent in here. This vent is a really, really big deal for letting air, ammonia build up. You know, you got a bunch of fish in the water. It's hot out here. Um, the gas builds up a lot of times. That's what kills your fish. You get that gas build up They pee in the live well and they create just a mess in there So that's gonna help out. I, would, I probably would have put another one in here one facing the other way Just so air is being forced in and air is being forced out But it is what it is. Let's walk around to the other side here And I'll show you what the other side of this live well looks like it's my tackle storage and it is full of crap Here's my tackle storage. So this was the live well over here is the live well 
and they put that divider in there. That's where I keep all my tackle. You know, just, I got too much stuff in here. It's kind of halfway organized. It doesn't look like it, but it works for me. And I had a bunch of uh, seat posts in here that they had to spot weld, close them up. This is a step down right here. So this is kind of like my little catch-all right here. Got all kinds of stuff in here. Um, I clean this up about once a month. Anytime I need a bait, it seems like it's down there. The floor, this is an aluminum floor. I've got foam in the bottom of this. So I put foam in the bottom of that and this floor actually rests on the ribs right here. So this is high float. Um, I, I was able to use like a 16 inch aluminum because of the supports. I've got all my wires run along the, the ribs right here. Just put some tubing over it. You can see on both sides, I've got wires. You want to run your graph wires down one side and everything else down the other side. That way you don't have any electrical interference. That's really key. If you run everything down together, you're gonna get some play. You're just gonna get some uh, interference. One of the best things about this boat is the trailer. I really like this trailer. It's a single axle trailer, but it has the steps. So they got these nice steps here on the back part and the front part. You can get up in and out of the boat. Really key, just a little thing, just handy. And I've also got these ratchet strap, strap downs, which are nice. You know, you, they stay attached to the trailer. You just clip them down, clip them up, whatever. It works out pretty good. License plate holder down there. Little location change. Looking at the back of the boat, I have a Tahatsu 99. This is a four-stroke FI fuel injection. This thing has been really, really nice. I got 11 pitch prop on there. I think it came with a 10. 11 seems to be perfect for me. I think it's really nice about a four-stroke versus two strokes. And there's not a lot of two-strokes out there running anymore, but the four-stroke does really well under a load so when you get some weight in the boat it tends to keep your top end speed up there really high or two stroke kind of bogs down maybe some of the two strokes are a little bit faster but this sucker i'm really really happy with it. it's been a great motor so far this is my nema switch for this right here this is the 0.1 antenna very key component of this boat i ran i ran the graphs without a 0.1 antenna for a while but as you start fishing offshore a little bit more um, if you don't have a 0.1 antenna or some kind of external antenna source, your waypoints don't match up very nice. You kind of drift, it doesn't show your boat position. This always shows me which way is north, which way the nose of my boat, the front of my boat is facing. It's very key for lining up on structure and fishing waypoints. This is a bench sheet. Obviously I've covered it up, just put carpet on it, but this is a bench sheet, it's full of foam. And what I did was I cut this little section of the bench sheet out, put a little hatch in there. So I've got some more storage and I've got access to my switch panel. There's a switch panel right here. It's a six gang switch panel. It's pretty sweet. I just got this off of Amazon, but you've got USB plugs right here. And then on this side, you've got like the traditional cigar plug for a spotlight or something. It's got a voltage meter on there. These will all light up. They're lit up right now. It's sunny out here. I think you can see them. But I've got nav right here. I've got pump in right here. And then I've got bilge pump. Another thing I forgot to show you up here on this front switch panel is I also have a cigar plug right here. And I have the two switches. The one switch controls the nav lights. And this other switch controls my recirculation pump, which is in my live well. So anytime I've got fish in the live well and I start thinking about it, I'm like, ah, I need to probably... You know circulate some of the water in there um it runs this little bilge pump right there so just flip that switch and we're good to go so this has access to the switch panel and storage i've actually got a bunch of crap in there got a bunch of wires it's a little bit messy but it is nice to have some more storage and i should probably put one in on this side because that's just kind of wasted space but maybe that's another project for another day on the back here this is my nav port that i use for my yellow tech stick yellow tech stick goes in there this is hot all the time this is for the nav lights this is run to a switch this is not this is hot like i said let's open this hatch up had these lids put in once again for our welding welded this little deck in here and this little cross beam it's super super sturdy um got an onboard two bank charger so it's charging these two batteries right here these are just duracell lead acid 27 series got them run to a switch all my power is run to this master switch right here this is a fuse right here it's a little bit messy in here but it seems to work fine so that's kind of the battery side i got a got a bilge pump stuck down there tubing runs up through here and out the side over here we've got the gas tank this is the gas tank and then this is my third battery when you have live scope Unfortunately, live scope draws a lot of juice. You're probably gonna have to get a third battery. So I've got third battery. This is just for live scope. And here's my NEMA backbone right here. 
and I've also got a switch just for live scope. So live scope is kind of a little baby. It's just the way it is. Everything's ran just to this battery for the live scope. Got all my wires for the graphs and everything. And speaking of the graph, at the helm here is the HDS-12 Lawrence. This is like a Gen 2, guys. This is old. This was the first touch version, but it's still working. So I'm still running with it. I'd like to get a live because the picture is a whole lot better. But, you know, if it's working, I'll run with it. We got this mounted on a gimbal mount on the side, and it's perfect. Using that for idling around, finding brush, finding fish, finding the things that you need to find to catch the fish. And then I typically, up front with the other two graphs, I use the HDS-9 just basically for mapping and, and waypoints. You know, when I find my waypoints, um, I hit the waypoint on the back graph, and I've got it on the front graph. Idle up to it, put the trolling motor down, get close to the waypoint on the HDS-9, and then I use the live scope to kind of look at it and see if it's worth casting in and line up on the target. On the back of the boat, running to my Lowrance 12, I've got the LSS-2 side scan, down scan, transducer, and then I've got a separate 2D transducer. And it's mounted on a poly board plaque, so I can kind of move them around if I need to move them around and make some adjustments. I had that option without having to drill more holes in the boat. That's basically a wrap, folks. Thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions about any of the boat mods that I did, feel free to reach out. And if you're doing a boat mod project this year, man, it's a lot of fun. It feels good to get it all done and look at something and know, hey, I did that. You know, it took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, but you can set it up the way you want it. You can make changes. If you don't like the way something's set up, you can rip it out and you can redo it. That's one of the advantages of having an aluminum platform to work with. It's a lot of fun and then just the carpet you know um probably c deck i'm thinking whenever this carpet goes bad i'll probably replace it with c deck because it's just pretty much maintenance free you can just spray it out it just seems it's a little padding you know got a little padding to it that's probably there's a few a few changes i would make um c deck is going to be an upgrade maybe put some more storage other than that i'm pretty happy with the boat you know it runs good it fishes good and it's a great platform so until next time